Hello, hello. Welcome to Sew Together Tuesday. I'm Teresa Coates. I'm the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics, and we are back again for another cuddle project. So thanks so much for joining us. If it's your first time here, please give us a little extra thumbs up, and I would love to hear about your favorite quilt shop. We always like to find new places uh, out there in America, especially that are selling our fabrics. So tell us all about them. Um, for the rest of you, thanks for coming back again. I appreciate it. Please leave uh, comments, all of those questions, all that good stuff in the uh, comments below or to the side, wherever the comments are where you're watching. Thanks for joining us from Facebook and YouTube. Um, also, we want to let you know that every week we do a giveaway. So if you want to share this video, you'll be entered into a giveaway. And at the end of it, we're going to give away a kit. We do have a special little thing we want to show you at the end of today's little class. So make sure that you stick around to find out if you won and to uh, to get in on the surprise. So thanks for being here. I appreciate it. Today we are making a little cuddle soft book. So you've probably seen these. I actually left my sample on the other side. Hold on. Hello. Um, <laughs> so this is what we're making today. It's a little soft book. If you are a parent or have been around toddlers, you know these things are very, very popular. So I used to um, make these out of just fabric panels for my kids, and now we have them out of cuddle panels, which is super awesome. So these are great little projects. We're gonna do this. We have a couple of versions. I'll show you the other one uh, at the end. We'll talk about some variations that I did on it and what you could do differently from how I'm gonna put it together today. Uh, but it is a super cute little thing. So let's get started with our, uh, our list of what do we need. So what you're gonna need for this project is the digital cuddle on the farm panel, or you can get it as part of the kit. So it's part of a read to me cuddle kit barnyard is what it's called. And you can Google that to find stores that carry it. It is in stores now. I know that it is oversold because it's been so wonderful. So the panel might be easier to find than the whole kit, but the kit is lovely because it comes with a blanket too. So you're also gonna to wanna to have your 24 inch ruler, a rotary cutter and self-healing mat, 9014 stretch needle. I just replaced mine. Uh, so it should be nice and fresh and ready to go. A crinkle material, we'll talk a little bit about that, what it is and why we wanna use it. We wanna have fabric clips using the winter clips from Clover, a felt tip marker. We're gonna use some flannel in ours today. We wanna make sure that we pre-wash that and uh, we'll talk about other variations on what you can use. So flannel is one of the things that's what I'm using today. Flower head pins, a hand sewing needle, you can use a hump jumper or bulky seam aid is what they're called. Uh, a micro serrated scissors from we use them both the Mori and Kai scissors. You can also do it with polyester batting instead of the flannel. So those are two variations. Uh, polyester thread I'm using Metrocene and stiletto and pressing tool, of course, from by Annie. I also forgot to add on there. You're going to want a point turner or a corner turner if... Um, you have one, so. All right, so that's what we're gonna need to be able to do this. So I wanna show you first what the panel comes as. I only had the one panel and I cut it up and did a bunch already, so we can't see it. So Michael, if you'll put the panel up there. So this is what the panel looks like when you buy it and it has all of these things on it and you're gonna cut them out. So I'll show you what it does, but it also has instructions on it. And then there's a little blue box down there on the corner that is actually, that's the handles, okay? so when you get like where are the handles coming from that's where they're coming from but all the instructions are on there if you buy the kit you will also get written instructions in the kit to make the blanket and this book okay and i'm going to want to show you okay so there we go and then i want to show you this is the fabric that is used on the little blanket so i have oops wrong way sorry it's super cute so it's adorable little farm animal print super cute okay so this is a um, this is what you'll make the blanket out of if you get the kit <laughs> All right, I was not taking that fabric down <clears throat> until he moved the camera back. <laughs> that was too close. <laughs> All right, so what we want to start with is we're going to start <laughs> we're going to start with the fabric. So I've got it. Like I said, I worked on some of it already. Let's start with the handle. So the handle is totally optional. It's just a cute little add-on that you can do. The um, the one that I did. Do the handle. Darn it keep doing this. I'm just going to keep it over here now. So this is the little handles that we're talking about. Okay. So these are optional. You don't have to do them. It just makes it a little bit easier to carry. All right. So that's what that is. So that's that hunk down at the bottom that you're going to cut out just right along the edge of 
the printing line. So one of the things to remember when you're doing this panel, as well as the other one that we did before, is you just cut it along the line of the printing. So we give you measurements. Don't worry about the measurements too much. Just make sure that you're cutting along those, the printing line. You'll be okay. And I'll show you uh, on the other one what exactly I mean. So here is the handle. I've cut it out. All right. And I'm going to show you a little secret that I use for doing the handle. So I'm actually going to use my half broken one. So I don't know if you remember a couple weeks ago, I was using this one and it had a little chip out of the corner and now it has just a whole broken hunk. So I have a new 24 inch ruler, but this is perfect wah, for this wah. one. So <laughs> I'm keeping it. I need to, uh, I need to have one this length too. So, so what I'm going to do, this piece is, it should be three and a half inches, which is my ruler. So three and a half inches. And I'm going to find the center line of it, which is going to be one and three quarter inches. So turn my ruler, my one and three quarter. So these, uh, these rulers, this is one of the things I like about them is this little white line here is the center. So it makes it really easy. This is three and a half. The, this line is the center. I'm just going to line that up against my fabric edge. Okay. And because it's cuddle, it can totally shift and move on me. So I will use that line to get that. There's my center easily lined up. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to fold this in to the center. And I'm just going to kind of finger press it, hold it there just a little bit. And I'm going to bring in the other side and do the same thing. Okay, just kind of matching these up in the center. And then I'm going to go ahead and fold this in half so that these edges line up. Let me grab my little wonder clips. And I'm just going to clip these edges together. So you can see the folds will actually stay fairly well. Enough that I can get them to fold together. So I'm going to come over here so it doesn't unfold on me too much. Get that end clipped together and then kind of work in between. Okay. So you could fold this in half and seam it and then turn it inside out, but this is way, way easier. All right. So now I've got my handle all clipped together and then we're going to sew it. Look how fast we're sewing today. Woo! Wow. Hey. <laughs> all right, here we go. Faster than normal for sure. Okay. So I've got it on a straight stitch. Like I said, I just replaced my needle because we want to replace our needles often. Uh, and it's on a straight stitch and a 3.0 stitch length. So I'm going to do things on here that are, um, I want them to hold pretty well. So I'm going to do them with a three stitch length. If your machine has a little trouble with it, you can definitely up that to a three and a half. Okay. So I'm going to do a little lock stitch here. Let's see if I can get this to start going. And I'm just going to stitch, top stitch it here with a uh, quarter inch seam, uh, a quarter inch allowance there. Hold on. It's, there we go. It likes to get caught up under there. Okay. So I'm just going to hold these together and kind of help it through till I can grab it back here because it wants to, I want to grab it. There we go. So if I kind of keep a hand on either side, it's a lot easier. Okay, we're just going to guide this through, do a little top stitch. Okay, and this is the super easy way of doing it. So this is a handle way that you can do on lots and lots of things. So not just this little book, but lots of projects. Okay, I'm going to get down here and I'm going to do a little turn. So I'm not going to cut it. I'm just going to turn it, come down the other side at about a quarter of an inch. Okay, you just top stitch that all the way down. It's about as fast as I've ever seen you sew on the show. <laughs> I usually don't sew very fast. It's you're, true. You're but crazy. that one is just, you know, it's a big straight line. 
it's not really too hard. All right, so now we've got our little handle and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna, see how crooked I got there? It got stuck, that's all right. <laughs> okay, I'm half this. I wish my, is it about seven and a half, I think? Nope, it's not quite. Okay, it's my math is bad. My math is really bad. I wish that the rulers, like the one, like I wish that they both came together at one right here. That's really, because I use this corner. The right. one corner is on the other end over here. And this is the one I never use. So I wish that the one okay. corner, like God. I can't. You need a, mir a mirrored version specifically for this new arrangement. Exactly. Because like I can't do math that fast in my head, apparently. All right. So I'm going to set my handles. So I've got my two handles and I'm just going to set them aside. All right. And now we're just going to wait for those until we get this whole thing together. All right. So what I've got here, I've cut that panel apart. Okay. So Michael, would you show the panel again really quick? Okay. Okay. So you can see this is the top part that I've got the, the top of the panel there. That's what I've got here. Okay. Thank you. So you can see that's what this is. All right. And I just cut it out. I just whacked it out big along the things. So you can see on here, we label this, which one is supposed to be which. It's pretty easy to tell that this is the cover. And these are both the same size. So they are the inside and outside of the cover. The, the inside ones are smaller. All right. So you can see they're quite a bit smaller than the outside. So that's how you can tell the difference. This one is actually super great, this panel, because while we have a page one, two, three, four, in all honesty, none of this matters which order it goes in. So the other book is a number book and you need to get your numbers in order. This one, you could put them actually in any order and it wouldn't matter at all. You just need to make sure that you're putting your front covers together because otherwise you're gonna be in trouble. Okay, so we're gonna cut these out. Like I said, we're just gonna cut these out along the lines. So when I say the outside of the printing, I mean the outside of this blue line is what we're gonna cut on. So let me grab my 24 inch ruler. So I just got a new one since that other one just broke. <laughs> and uh, I got a new one from Ulfa, which I really, really like. So these are my favorites and we'll talk about it probably on the I Love Cuddle group that we have um, about why I like this one with the 45s. So, but it is a, a favorite. All right. So I'm just gonna cut this out with my rotary. Get it as nice and straight as possible. You can also see that the, uh, that my half inch seam is gonna come into <clears throat> excuse me, into this area just a little bit. So when I have a half inch seam, it's gonna be white along this edge. All right, so that's my stitching line right there. It's a little bit different on the inside books, but works basically the same. Where you can see, you can see where your, <clears throat> excuse me, where your seam allowance is gonna be. Let's see, it moved on me again, dang it. So you could do this with scissors too. All right, I'm gonna turn that. I'm gonna cut the ends off. I wanna make sure that these corners are nice and straight and I can do that by lining up my ruler here and then kind of giving this a little bit of a tug. I'm making sure that I have squares on my corner. And I'll do the same thing here. And I will cut it so, if I can lay this back out, so when I lay my ruler on it, I'm laying my ruler over the fabric that I don't want to accidentally cut wrong. Okay. All right, so there is the inside cover. So we're going to put that aside. I'm going to cut the outside as well. Let's get that laid out. And then this one is just the raw edge is going to be right at the edge of that <clears throat> print. Okay. Too many tails. <laughs> no, 
they're getting in the way. All right. What was that little scoochy maneuver that Let's I just try to saw scoot you out do. the scoot out the uh, folds? I like it. Yeah, it works pretty well. The ruler is really helpful for kind of flattening things out. So when I'm moving the ruler, I tend to lift it just slightly and slide it rather than lifting it all the way because it tends to grab it. But if you push it, and it'll tend to grab the fabric too. So just lift and slightly move. But the ruler will keep all those little extra pleats and puckers and stuff. Okay, one more. So this works sort of like what we've talked about, like you mark your fabric first and then cut it, is I can move this all over the place because I know exactly which lines I'm cutting on. Because they've been cut straight, so or they've been marked straight. So if you are frustrated because you feel like your lines are crooked, it's just the fabric gets crooked because it's a knit. So I'm gonna give it a little shake. And there we go. And now you are covered in cuddle dust. Okay. Gosh. That's a first. No, <laughs> okay. no, not, it's not. Not even close. <laughs> All right. So I've got my two pieces. So this, these are my two pieces. So at this point, we could sew these two together and start making the book. I want to add a little bit of stability to the book to give it a little more uh, just holdability. And um, so I'm going to add some flannel to it. You can add batting to it. So you could add nothing, but then the pages are this floppy, which is super floppy, uh, which if your machine doesn't really want to deal with the thickness of anything else in it, this is the way you could do it. You could do it with the batting. Let me see if I can reach over and grab that. So this is one that I did with batting in it. And I did one layer of batting. Okay. So this is important to remember is that only one of these pages has batting on it. The other one does not. So this one does not have batting. This one does. When they lay together, they're just going to work together and have that thickness, but double that thickness is going to be crazy thick. So you don't want to do that. You just want to do one. And what I did with this was the Quilter's Dream Poly Request batting, which is this really thin, you can see how thin that batting is. It's really great. So this stuff works really well when you're adding some stability, but don't want to add a lot of loft. So that's Quilter's Dream request and that's what I used in this so we'll compare later how thick it is but look at how thickness the thickness of this and that's because of all that layers of batting so this one has six layers right here all right so we're gonna do it with flannel in the one I'm doing today I'm gonna show you how I do that you would do it the same way if you were using batting you could also use cotton uh, just quilting cotton I use the flannel because it has a little bit of extra loft and especially after it's been washed it has a little more you want to always make sure that you pre-wash your flannel because flannel tends to shrink cuddle is a polyester it will not shrink and uh, but the, the flannel will so this is just some old flannel I have this is um, actually from Luke Haynes's collection from I don't know six seven years ago so this is just some scrap I had I made some PJ pants and I have this left over so I'm going to use that. So I'm just going to lay out my flannel. So whether it's batting or flannel, you're going to lay it out first, and then we're going to put this on. So I'm going to do this similar to how I do the quilts. All right, and I'm going to spray base the back of this. What's that spray based? And this is, sorry, OD505 spray. It's my favorite. Nice. Okay, and then we're going to lay this down. So this is similar. Anything that I do this spray based, you just kind of could lay it down. And then we pad it in place. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing. Pull this over halfway. Do a little bit of spray based on here. You can see I'm just doing a little. I like the Odif stuff because it doesn't. Um, smell a lot. It doesn't smell really at all. And it washes out really easily. So even if I get this on my mat, I can use a sponge and some hot soapy water and it will come right off, which I appreciate. Get that little wrinkle out of there. Okay. All right, so now these are attached and will basically just play as one for the rest of the time. What is uh, too much 
uh, spray. Oh, well, there's and one. what happens when you do that? There's one really easy way to tell if you have too much is that it will get wet. So you will have a wet spot when you spray it. And if it is too, you're like, you can usually feel a little bit of cool through it, but if it's cold, you've got too much on there. So that's how you're like, okay, that was too much. Honestly, it's just a slight webbing over the whole thing is all you want. Okay. So not a lot is really what you need. I can usually get two big quilts out of this. And then obviously I've used this same can on here for months. So you can use it for quite a while. And it does wash out, right? It does wash out. Yeah. Yeah, it says on the thing that you have to dry clean it to get it out. And I'm sure that that needs to get all res residual anything out. But I wash it and it comes right out all the time. Like I wash it, I wash the, my overspray sheet and it comes right out all the time. So super good stuff. So the other thing that you could do, and I had meant to show you and I totally forgot. I just cut both pieces out. Is that you can have the one piece with the, the whole thing, spray base the whole thing on and then cut this out together so that you're cutting the flannel and the outside. So now I have to cut the outside again, but that's not a big deal. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut along the edge of the flannel. And I'm just eyeballing it because I'm brave like that. <laughs> Take my tails off this time. And we'll just cut all of that. And now because it's spray based it on there, it's just gonna it's just gonna stay. All right, if it comes loose, you can just spray baste it back on there or pin it or whatever. All right. Okay. So there we go. Should I put this flannel scrap in there too? My for my scrap giveaway? Um uh, I don't know about that one. It seems a little off message. <laughs> but you do use it. <laughs> you do. You could. <laughs> all right. So here's my flannel all stuck on there. Now this piece has a little bit more oomph. Okay. So this is the difference in how they kind of lay. All right, so this one is real scrumply and this one not as much because it's got the body to it. So this I like, it gives it just a little bit more oomph to it. Okay, so once we do that, and we're gonna do that with all three sheets. So you have six of these that come in it and you're gonna put those together so that you have three separate pages. So there's three separate sheets. I'm not sure how you'd, how you'd word that exactly. Uh, okay, so now we have this we've got this we want to sew our straps in before we get going so we're going to do that and i'm going to find the center go ahead and stick a pin in in the middle now i want to put my straps so that they're about an inch away from that center so again i'm going to use my board Let me go ahead. Oops. I'm going to put it so that the uh, fold goes toward the center. And I'm just going to pin these down. So I'm going to take these to the machine and do a little zigzag on both ends. We're going to do this one too, just to adhere those. So we want to make sure we kind of stabilize those before we do the rest of the sewing so that they don't move too much on us. All right. So there's my center again. I open it up on either side. I'm gonna pin about an inch away. Not that direction, so it'll stay a little better. I'm gonna bring that around about an inch. So you end up having about two inches in between, okay? And now we're going to take those to the machine. So you can see how this wants to kind of pull like this. So when I'm sewing it, I'm actually going to have to make sure and pull this so that it's nice and straight because that's going to happen every time it sews. And it's just part of what it does. Okay. Clips. All right. So now we're going to switch this over to a zigzag. We're going to just do a big zigzag because it just needs to get kind of held on there. So I'm going to go ahead. 
get a needle down and then take my pin out and then just zigzag this down. Okay, I'm just gonna keep going because it's easy. And as I get closer, I'll get this underneath my foot, get it nice and flat and then zigzag this down from here. Okay, so this doesn't have to look nice. It doesn't have to be neat. It's just holding it in place. And we're gonna come over here and do the same thing on the other end. Okay. Do the same thing, just kind of sew forward until we get over there. Get it underneath. And then this wants to pull, so I'm gonna I'm gonna shove it exactly where I want it to be. And if I need to really hold it, I would have my stiletto, but I don't know where it is right now. Hold on. <laughs> so I used to pin and bend it. Dang it. That was gonna be clever and useful, and it wasn't. Okay. It is not cutting my thread the way it's supposed to be. Hold on, this is this is something I've learned. Is that if it's not cutting my thread correctly, it's probably not threaded correctly. So I wanna make sure I'm doing it right here. Yeah. So something is threaded wrong. That took me a while to learn. And I don't know why it did, but it did. So when the thread isn't cutting, something isn't right. And I re-threaded this just before we started. So let me make sure. Okay, so this little, so what I'm checking is this little dot right here to make sure that it's lined up because it's supposed to be lined up with those. So that seems to be right. I'm gonna take the bobbin out, put this back in. Actually, I'm gonna pop this out. Put it back in. Put my little lid back on. Stick the bobbin in. Do it one more time. Where's the little plastic case? Hold on, it's over here. You're hiding it. I'm trying to get my there we go. Uh, there we go. I'm trying to get my camera loose. I had it wedged into <laughs> your sewing machine. That's about as close as it can get. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now let me try that again. Thanks for problem solving with me, guys. Yep, whatever it was, I just solved it. Okay. Good rethreading will do it most of the time. Check out your moves while the DJ revolves it. Yep, exactly. <laughs> okay, All pop right. culture reference. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so now we've got the handles wedged on there. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lay this on. So this one is a little bit wonky because you have these handles in there. The other ones are going to work just like this, except they'll be flat. Okay, and like I said, the... Uh, the handles are totally optional. You can choose whether you wanna do them or not. So I'm going to pin the corners first. And as we've talked about before, I pin the corners so that they wedge in at a 45. Okay, the reason I do this is because if I pin it this direction, it's less likely to hold my fabric where I want it to be. This one, I can't really move it out of the way. It's just stuck where I want it to be. So I can't really mess with it as much. So I always do it in at a 45 on the corners. So we're gonna make sure that the corners match. Your fabric is, the nap is running the same way on both sides. So obviously make sure that your designs are the same and then your nap will run the same way, which means it'll be a little bit easier to sew because the naps are going the same direction. I'm gonna pin the corners and then we're gonna pin the tops. So on, these, they don't match, all, well, I guess they will match all the way up at the top. So we want this blue to match each other. So I wanna lay them on there so that it matches. And then I'm gonna kind of roll it out so that it will match, okay? This is one of those few places that I can get a little bit picky. So if you are like me and want them to match, what you can do is actually sew this first and then do the rest of it. So let me show you how that works. I'm gonna put it back on a straight stitch. And I'm gonna do it at a three millimeter stitch length for this. 
Okay, and I'm just going to sew this one little area with a half inch seam allowance. Very carefully. Making sure that I'm catching it and that I don't sew over the pin. So I should be able to turn this up and see if it matches. So I got my blue lines to match. Okay, so now when I do the whole sewing, those blue lines will match. So for me, this is a thing that I like to have happen is that your, mat your lines will match along the top. So you might not be, <laughs> you know, sort of silly obsessed with that, but that's one place that I will get picky. So I did, but you don't have to, okay? Just so you know, you don't have to get picky about that. Okay, so now I'm gonna put my handles in and to keep my handles straight across the top because as you saw, they really want to curve in. I'm gonna push this to the side just a little and stick a pin so that it's holding down the side of that handle. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. And kind of give that a tug so that it will go straight into the book. Okay, so now my, my handle should go straight in. My top is matched. I'll do the same thing over here. Push that so that it's straight. Push this one so it's straight. I'm getting my fabric all even, evenly spaced there. All right. I'm going down the side. So now everything is kind of where I want it to be. And then I can pin or clip the rest of it. I'm going to do kind of a mix of both. Oh, one more thing before we get, before I forget that, is that we need to mark the, uh, the opening. There it is. So we need to mark a spot where we're going to turn this inside out. Because as you can see, going to turn this, we're going to sew it one way and then turn it inside out. So I'm going to just make a mark. So this is my back side. I'm going to do it there. So here's one inch. There's three inches. So that's where I want my gap to be for when I turn it. So I'm going to keep that there. I'm going to do a little double pin to make sure that I know where I want to turn that. So that's my start stop point. I'm just going to pin it like this. Because this is actually pretty simple, you don't have to do as much pinning. If you're brand new to cuddle, you definitely want to do like the double pinning. I'll show you on this side what I mean by that. It's it a little funkier with these handles in there. And we just want to pin this two rows away from the parallel to the raw edge. I'm going to go ahead and pin that all. So what this does, if you are new to sewing with this, it holds it a lot better. So this is one place that that might work really well because it has more stability to hold it. Otherwise, I can come up here. So along the top, I'm actually just going to use my clips. I'll do those just a little bit. Give my edges to match. The other thing I noticed that when I was sewing this, it was easier if I put the part that was, so I need to do it the other way, because I want to sew with the part that is the flannel up. Okay, I'm glad I thought about that now. Ooh. Okay, so what happens is when I'm sewing it and it's going against the machine and this is against the feed dogs, it feeds in a lot better. If this is against the feed dogs, the cuddle wants to stretch a little bit along the top. The cuddle just kind of likes to stretch a little bit. So if I put it on the bottom, it actually works better. So let me flip my pins over. Make this work. <laughs> Do we have any questions or everybody's just, you know, coming along with us? I think we're all us? just cruising right along. Good. It's not a hard project. And it is super cute. I hope we do a million more of these because I love the soft books. I think they're, they're awesome. And kids love them. Okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add clips and then pins all the way around the whole thing. So I'm going to do a bunch of clips here and I'm still going to kind of double pin it because I'm going to put a second row of pins in there. I don't... Uh, 
I don't like the clips don't hold it tight enough for me. I want the pins to be able to hold it a little bit better. Some people really just love the clips and that's all they use. So try it yourself and see how it works. Put some more. So same idea as the double pinning, but with clips instead. Is there any transparency to the, uh, the, the panel? And what I guess why I'm asking is uh, it does seem that your flannel has coordinated, even though it's going to be completely trapped inside. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it will be completely trapped inside and no one will ever see it. Yeah, but no, there, you don't, you won't see through it at all. Yeah, that's definitely, definitely hidden. I just happen to have it. That's all. Just worked. I looked, I went to see what, because I always say like we have, you know, flannel from, Usually 1984 is the year I pick, but this was from maybe 2014. So Wasn't it last year 1984? I think it was. Yeah, yeah. I think so too. <laughs> mm. All right, so I'm going to, you can see I'm double pinning. So back, back up just a little bit. So what it was that I did is, so this edge is actually double pinned. So there's their two row of pins. The rest of it, I just do some wonder clips and then some pins in the middle to try to hold it down. Not really the middle, but within it to try to hold it. All right, and this is what works best for me when I'm doing things with clips because I want the I want the fabric held a little bit more than the clips will do. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and just sew it together. If I can find the part that I left the holes, there we go. So this is a half inch seam allowance, which is gonna work really nicely and makes it easy to do. When we do our top stitching, it's going to be a quarter of an inch again. So I'm going to go ahead and sew in from the raw edge. What do I have it at? Three. Okay. I'm going to sew in about a half an inch and then I'm going to lift my foot and turn it. Nope. I have to do a little bit more. So I have to check back stitch forward. I think that might be closer. Yes. Okay. So my half inch is just at the edge of this little line and my foot. So I'm going to aim for that. I'm going to do another little back stitch here. Go forward a couple little stitches, backward a couple. This is going to be my turning gap. So I want it to be nice and strong. And then I'm just going to work my way all the way around here, taking out the wonder clips as I go and letting the pin stay in. So when I'm getting near these corners, I want to make sure, actually the whole way, I want to make sure that I'm keeping some tension on it so that the two sides are working together because we're working with two substrates now. So we have one that is a knit and one that is a stretch. They're going to work a little bit differently. So I'm going to go ahead and be picky here. Sorry, there's a lot of back and forth right here because I don't have that knee lift because I'm standing. So that, Got it. <laughs> that's the problem. Okay, so I'm just going to get fussy with my half inch at the corner to make sure that that matches. And then I'm going to keep, like I said, keep some tension on this as it comes through. And come over this. If your machine doesn't like the thickness of this, you may have to hand crank it over the handles. Because the, hand, the handles are four layers each so then you've got six layers of cuddle right there and one layer of flannel and one layer of flannel so if you've done it with the batting then there's a layer of batting too. But it can get thick so definitely you can just um turn, hand crank it the first one of these i actually did on my little featherweight with the walking foot and i could do everything but the center seam on the walking or on the uh, featherweight so definitely is possible we keep saying we're going to do this, but one of these days, I think we're going to do a show where we do it with the, with featherweight. the featherweight. I think so because it's really it's I a great little it. machine, and it's, if you have the walking foot for it, it works just fine with all of this fabric. Such a beautiful machine. Yes. Okay, so I'm just gonna, like I said, I'm gonna get futzy with the corners just because I want those half inches to actually be half inches. The pins are just staying in. When I get done, I'll take all those pins out. But for now, they're just going to live there. Except for this one might have to come out because it looks like it's going to get real close to my needle. I don't really want to sew over it. 
Okay, so as we're coming along here, we're gonna get to that part that I already stitched so that I could get the centers to match. And we're just gonna aim for that. So that should be just at the half an inch and I should be able to just kind of run right over it. Okay, and that'll match up. So if I run over it or if I'm just slightly to this side of it, the stitches won't show. You just don't wanna be on the, the seam allowance side because otherwise the stitches will show on the outside. If it if it does, we'll totally just clip them. It's fine. Okay. So I'm keeping some tension on the front so that the two will work together because I can feel they want to be a little different and I don't want them to be. Okay. So same thing as I get up to this corner. Do a little, in, a little back stitch. So I kind of overshoot the half inch and then come back and try to nail it. And that's, um, it kind of reinforces that corner just a little bit better. And I always do a uh, back stitch here at the corners. So make sure that you do that. We're gonna push those corners out real nice. So we wanna make sure that they're, they're tight. If you uh, have any trouble, go back over them and stitch them again. Make sure that they're nice and secure. Okay. Work this over. When you're sewing downstairs with your Bernina, what size walking foot or foot do you use? I use the walking foot, yeah, which is just a whole other foot that goes on there. Does it um, does it line up fairly well with a half inch seam allowance yep. as well? Yeah, the uh, the foot itself is just about a half an inch, so you can go ahead and measure that. And when you're using it, make sure that yours is at a half an inch. And if not, the other thing you can do, especially with the Bernina, is that you you measure from the edge and get it to a half an inch and take your needle back and forth to get an actual half an inch. But then use the side of your walking foot. It is the nice thing about it, like a regular walking foot. It has a straight edge. This one with its curve can get a little bit confusing. Okay, so this grew just the tiniest little bit. Do you see that? So it grew from the back side. So here's, oh, here's yeah. my front edge. Here's my back edge. So I'm actually going to have a little bit... Uh, It'll be a little bit wider than a half an inch right here because I'm going to try to straighten that back up. Okay. I'll just aim back toward a half an inch. And that's because I, I will chalk it up to like we have so much going on here that it's trying to hump over and try to even out over these handles that can get a little off. It's okay. We just made it work. <laughs> right? Just stitch all the way down the side. Like I said, I kind of you can see if I kind of pull it out, it'll it'll feed in a little better if I give it a little bit of tension, and it's less likely to bubble up in front of your foot. I'm gonna come around and see what you're doing with your left hand. Okay, hurry, cause I'm almost done. I know. <laughs> so you can see, I just kind of guide it straight out the back. Because the fabric is so thick, it definitely needs a little help sometimes. So you turn that. A little a pile happening right there. Then I'm just going to stitch off the edge. Do a little back stitch. Stitch off all the way. Clip my thread. All right. So now I'll come around. I'm going to take the rest of my pins out. Do a little double check. Make sure that all of the handles got caught and all both edges are caught the nice thing about a half an inch seam allowance is you really don't have much chance of missing an edge so take all those pins out and then i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to clip my corners so i vary back and forth be between clipping corners and not and it really is if you're going to be able to see it's feel it dramatically and usually if you're able to see it it's the problem so with this one because it's so thin and it's such a small object that you will totally notice if the corners are bulky on lux throws so our big blankets that you do with two yard cuts those i never trim the corners because that fluffiness just kind of fits in with the fluffiness of the fabric but with this one it's thin enough that i want to cut that bulk out Hey, Linda, not only has she accidentally stabbed herself with the stiletto, she's stabbed me. Yeah. 
I'm not going to say whether or not that was an accident. <laughs> I'm not either. <laughs> okay. Yes. I should, did she ask if I've ever stabbed myself with it? Yeah. Yeah. I have dropped it on the floor numerous times though, and it's never gotten my foot. So that's been lucky. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> it's right. not as sharp as those neat as the, the clover pins though. Yeah, that's, that's true. Okay. Those things will draw blood instantly. They will. All right. So I've gotten all of my pins out. My stitches are all done here. Oh, I didn't want to turn this inside out yet. I wanted to do the crinkle. I wanted to show you guys how to do that. Whew, I almost missed that spot. Okay. So the crinkle is this weird little thing. <laughs> there was is. already a question about it and I knew it was, they knew the answers were coming. Here the answers come. are coming. So this is what it is that we're using. It's called crinkle material. You can also list, you know, find it as crinkle fabric. This is the only one that I've used, the only brand that I've used that I really, like I've liked it. It doesn't do weird things. I got it at Ann Arbor Sewing Center when I was teaching there like a year and a half ago, um, pre-pandemic. The nice thing, so they have a bunch of ideas of what you can do with it. It is also, if I see at the bottom, scroll down, choo, 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 machine washable and dryer safe. Okay, that's super cool. So make sure that uh, you know you're getting something that is actually gonna gonna wear. So what's nice about this is because this is a project that you're probably gonna wanna wash and dry because it's you know being used with kids. Then the actual crinkle stuff here is safe in the washer and dryer, which I think is awesome. So I don't know exactly what it's made out of, but that feels a little magical to me. Okay, so I did mine. So they are opposite. So I want to make my front cover. So I need to find out which one is the front cover here. I want to make my front cover have the crinkle. Okay, I think that's the inside. I think that's my front cover. Hold on. Sorry. I want to try to get two words. Yes. Okay. So this is my front cover here. So this is the one I want to have a little bit of crinkle on it. So I'm just going to put a pin there so I don't forget. And I'm just going to cut a piece of this. So you can see it's a big bunch of stuff. It's a yard that's in here, I think is what it says. Uh, yeah, 36 by 48 inches. So like I said, I've made a bunch of these and I bought it at least a year and a half for two years ago. It will last you forever. That's really what I mean. <laughs> so I'm going to measure this. It's about 10 and a half inches for the, for the amount. I'm going to do 11, probably a little more than 11 inches by three inches is what I'm going to cut. And I, when I did this the first time, I did like, I, I don't particularly love the crinkle. So I was like, I don't want it to be too noisy. So I did just a little one inch strip and stuck it in the corner. And that was just enough to basically make that edge stiff and weird and not make any crinkly sound. So it was a complete and utter waste of time. So what I found is I did a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger. Three inches seems to be good because it adds enough crinkly sound to it without it being uh, obnoxious. So one, the first one I did, I actually covered the whole book with the crinkle and that was a terrible idea. So <laughs> I would not recommend that. That is just so much crinkle that uh, you really can't escape the noise. So I'm going to pin or clip this on because I'm going to pin, I'm going to sew it all in place. So what I found too is that you want to do this after you've sewn the other part because this will want to fight you a little bit. So if I've got the other part all sewn, I'm not trying to hassle with three layers of, no, it's actually four layers of three different substrates, all doing different things. So I sew this first and then I'm gonna come along and sew this down over it, okay? So we're gonna go back to the sewing machine and sew this in position. And I'm just gonna go ahead and sew it just inside the line that I stitched before. You can Boy, hear it. I like, hear it popping through the material. Yeah, so this one, I, I have it at a three stitch and uh, it's fine, it holds it just fine. If you felt like you wanted to do a bigger stitch here, I'm sure that you could, because we're just trying to tack it in place and not really sew the seam. So let me see if I can do that. I feel like, those close stitches always kind of scare me. 
You get like, almost baste it, basically. Yeah, so I'm gonna up it to a four. I'm gonna hold this in place. I will say that you need to make sure and clip it and then hold it with your hand as you're sewing because it will want to shove forward because it's a plastic. So it'll kind of grab to the bottom of your foot and push instead of stitching down. So I found that if I just kind of guide it and hold it there, it'll it'll be okay. If it gets a little bit over to the edge, it's fine. On the other one, I missed it just a little. So you can see this shoved over on me. I try to get it to come back. And I just want to stitch so that I'm stitching on or next to the line that I sewed before. Okay. And I only did one edge on each thing so that you have every other page crinkles. It is totally up to you. I was just not one of those moms who loved all the noisy things. <laughs> <laughs> that was not my jam. So I didn't do it. So we're going to just trim this off a little bit, get that out of our seam allowances. A smaller apartment makes the whole children should be seen and not heard to say yeah. much more difficult. Yes, it's totally <laughs> true. So I'm just going to cut this off right here. So this big hunk right here, the end, I'm just going to just slice it right off. All right, so now take that out. I've got my little crinkly bit. It'll make some noise. It's not too obnoxious. I tell you, when I did the whole, whole page, it was terrible. You couldn't even breathe on it without it making noise. It was, it was pretty intense. So let me get this through. Okay, we're just going to shove all of this through that little hole. So three inches is about as small as you want to do because it does get pretty bulky here. Okay, pull this out. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make noise for the rest of the time that we're working on it, which is also why I wanted to do it last. <laughs> yeah, because our new mics are pretty sensitive. They are. Okay, so got that one to match up pretty darn well. I'm happy with that. That matched up pretty darn well. Happy with that. All right, now I need to turn my corners out. So this is my little hair marker and point turner from Clover. Because guess what? I like their tools. <laughs> they are really good. So I'm just going to use that and push this corner out if I can get it to move. Okay. And then just use that to get this corner to come out as square as I can. All right, which is pretty good because it's we're using digital cuddle, which is a little bit thinner and works really nicely. Okay, so those corners turned out nice. I'm going to tell you that these corners are going to be better than the one with the crinkle because the crinkle just adds another thickness weirdness to it. Okay. I'm going to push that out. Let's see if I can get into the seam a little bit better there. All right, work that through. We want to make sure that you're doing it pretty gently while this doesn't have a super pointy corner. If you shove real hard, you can get it through. Believe me, it is possible. All right, so there we go. There's our corners. They're pretty, pretty darn good, I think. They're very noisy. <laughs> we have the whole thing. So once we have it to this point, I'm going to sew this closed. So I've got my needle. And I'm going to hand sew this closed because really it's just this little section that is, uh, it's very visible. So on some things like the, uh, the throw, then we could just zigzag the edge and nobody would ever see it and it would be fine. With this one, it's right on the top and very visible. So we're going to hide it in here. Okay. I was going to I was going to show you this neat little trick and then I realized this one is actually different. So this one I can't really see where my seam allowances are. On the on the pages, the white you can almost see it. There you go. The white is right there. That's your half inch seam allowance. It's right where the edge of the white is. So it was really easy to see where my seam allowance was supposed to be. This not so much. So we're too big or not? Has that ever happened to you? Just pops right through. Whiff. <laughs> okay. well, let me see if that knit fabric. It just comes right through. So let's see if we can get it stuck in the flannel. 
Okay, I'm going to try to get that folded in and hold that. All right, so now I'm just going to do a little ladder stitch. So go back and forth between the two sides. Hand stitching cuddle is not always fun. I don't know why it has a hard time going through the fabric, but it kind of does. With this one, it really wants to go through the flannel too, which makes it a little bit more difficult. Okay. So you can see this, these little lines, those are the ladders of a ladder stitch. So that's where it gets its name. We just pull that in, make it nice and tight. If you pull too hard, you'll get some weird little puckers in there. So just kind of loosen it back up again. So all the way across, you could do a whip stitch, but seriously, ladder stitch is good, except when your thread comes undone. At least I have a nice big eye in this one. I have some needles that have the teeny tiniest little eyes and I spend half an hour trying to thread it. I did recently get some of those self-threading needles that have, okay, it's almost like, not two eyes, but it has like a little hunk at the top that you slide the fabric or the thread into and then it slides down into the actual eye. They're kind of cool. I just recently got some so I could try them out. As you know, my eyesight fades. Okay. All right. So you can see this one. It's like if I pull, I pulled it a little bit too tight, it gets a little gathery. So I can kind of just pull it out. Okay. And then I can tie the knot. So I always want to make sure I check that because it's really easy to, to pull it a little tight. I'm just going to knot. If you're like Linda and allergic to hand stitching. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, <laughs> what, is, is this Linda White? The, She's Linda definitely. O, Linda <laughs> oh, okay. Because <laughs> Linda White is too. You could just zigzag it on your machine. It'll just be, or you could do a top stitch there. Um, it'll just show. So this is just the way that you could do it that will uh, hide it a little bit. Let me just push my thread through in another place. Clip it off. So you could you could just zigzag the edge or um, or top stitch it. When we do the top stitch, if you left this, you would have like a weird pucker, not pucker, but like an open sort of floppy thing right here, which would be kind of weird. But if you really really hate <laughs> the hand sewing, <laughs> then you could do that. All right. So let's go over, and now we're going to top stitch it. So at this point. I can clip it and I'm just going to use some of the clips that I have here because they're all over my machine instead of in the little container. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to do some clipping. So you can also use the big ones, the jumbo clips, which are really nice too. But this one, because we're doing a quarter inch top stitching, the wonder clips, the small wonder clips work just fine. When I'm doing the throws or anything that needs a larger top stitch, I usually use a jumbo clip. Okay, so we want to make sure at this point that these handles are pulled out. And those edges are pretty even. Which one is the front? That's the front. I want to stitch from that side. So I want to stitch from the front so that when we close the book, it looks okay. If the inside doesn't look as nice, it's okay. So I'm going to do the same thing here, pull those out, make sure that it is even. Okay, that my edges are even because they're going to want to pull right here where the handles are. And you just really want to do this just a little bit to keep it even as you're going because it'll want to kind of roll on you a little. It doesn't do it nearly as bad as like a Lux will do. All right, so we're going to start at this bottom corner. Actually, I'm going to start at this bottom corner because this is, or I'm going to start in just a little bit. We're going to start over here because this is on the back and it will hide. We won't see it as much. So when I found, if I started the corner, it's a little bit harder. So I'm going to start in just a little bit to show you how that works. Okay. Hold on. I'm going to do a little cleanup here. 
And when I say clean up, we're just going to swoosh it. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this <laughs> underneath my foot. Half inch seam allowance. Put it down there. And now I'm just going to start stitching. So I'm not going to back stitch because when I come back around here, I'm going to top stitch over that and secure it. All right. So I'm just going to stitch. And then I want to up my, oh, we did, it's up to a four. Look at that. I planned ahead. Not really, yeah. but you know, it worked. So I want to top stitch at a four because I want it to feed through a little bit faster. And we're not trying to really keep anything secure. We're just trying to keep it in place. It's, this isn't going to get any stress. So the handles, they're going to get a lot of stress, but they've been basted in, sewn down, and now they're going to get top stitched in place. So they're not going anywhere. Okay, so as we get to this corner, this cor the corners have a lot of thickness in them because it has all the stuff. We did cut them out so they're not quite as bad, but they'll still be a little bit bulky. And what I found is when I get to this point and I get it under here at a quarter of an inch, I'm kind of get my corner, it's kind of wedged under there. And what I realized is that I was, I was having a really hard time getting it to move. So I found this little trick. And so I use my little Annie stiletto and I shove into the fabric kind of by the needle. Okay. I just shove it in, catch it, and then I can start pulling it until it catches underneath the digital dual feed and we'll keep going. So if you are having trouble with your corners, that works really well. And I'll do it on all the corners so you'll kind of get to see it. And I will move around it on the next corner to the back of the machine so you can see what that stiletto is doing back there. Okay, so then I want to open this up. I'm going to pull that straight out. Kind of work this through. So again, if this is a place that you need to hand crank it, you can. You might. And I'm going to do the same thing as I come over here. Get that nice and straight. Work my way over that and up to the next corner okay here we go we're going to move around okay so much head straight for the corner i'm going to get up here be about a quarter of an inch can't see where you're at so i'm not sure what you're seeing. okay there we go all right so i'll put that down and i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to drag that through All right, so I can keep my stiletto in there. It's just barely in the edge away from my needle. So it's not gonna get stitched on because we really wanna make sure we don't hit the metal of the stiletto with your needle. It'll just shatter your needle. And that's not good for you, the machine, anything. All right, come on here. And as I stitch this top, it should come along fairly close, yeah, to that blue edge. When you stab the, when you quote end quote stab the fabric with your stiletto, it actually goes through pretty much all the layers, right? It acts as almost like a temporary pin. Yeah, it's kind, of, and it's like when I'm doing that, it acts almost as a te as a temporary hand pulling it. It's it's kind of crazy. It does go through all the layers, though. I'm not stabbing. If you can see, I'm going to do another one. You can hear it kind of stabbing through there, that cutting through the. Um, sorry the crinkle paper there, or fabric. Okay, so when I do this, I wonder if that little, I feel like that little hump jumper might come in handy. Do you see how my little foot is doing that? That's what this is for. Let's see if we can make all of this work. Okay, so this is my little hump jumper. Gina-ma-jig, thing Bob. Gina-ma-jig. Look at that. Do you see how it sits up there? and makes it flat. Oh, it actually is almost acting like a, a leader ender. Yep. It totally was easier that way, too, because that oh. helps grab it, because it grabbed the Genomajig, uh, which is the technical brand name for it, and helped it come along. Oh, good. Let's try that at the next corner. Oh, we're figuring stuff out. So you have one of those. How many more corners do we have? Two. only have two more corners. Or we only have one more, one more corner. One more corner. All right. One more. So we'll do two with and two without. I'm going to go ahead and stay back here. Yeah, do. I think that's a much better view of what is actually happening. Get this right up here. 
I'm going to turn this and I'm going to find my little thing, stick it back under here. So I'm putting it right up to the fabric so that it will sit. So you can see it stops here. Okay. So it's going to let that foot sit fairly flat. So let me move that really quick so we can just have a good comparison of what happens. Oh, wow. See that? Yeah, no wonder the fabric doesn't want to go. Right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> it really doesn't. So the little stiletto and that thing, that works like a champ, man. Money. It's like a million dollar idea right there. Okay, maybe not a million dollars, yeah. but you know. <laughs> It was $5 for the GMA jig and 20 for the stiletto. So there you go. It's a $25 idea. <laughs> okay. Don't forget your two cents. That's right. Okay. So we're going to come right along here. You can see this is nice and easy because it's just the edge. And now I'm going to make sure that I'm aiming for this guy. I'm going to trim my thread first before I get there. I literally never put the camera in the sewing machine here before. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> we're finding all sorts of new places. It's great. All right. So we're going to get this to come and I'm aiming for the line that I stitched on before. I'm going to try to get it to sew right over the top of that. Do a little back stitch and cut my thread. Lift that up. Ta-da. Look at that. That all looks right, really great. Around. All right, so now we've got the whole thing top stitch. And what that does is you can see it actually makes it more like a book instead of some floppy thing. It gives it the shape that it needs to be. All right, that turned out just fine. Now we're going to put it together. So like I said, with the number version of this, uh, the other soft book, you're going to want to make sure that you get it in the right order so the pages flip right. With this one, uh, Michael, can you put the uh, panel back up? I'll show you on there. So if you see, we have one, two, three, four, blah, 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 blah. So two, so the nay, which is why I have a pin on here, was my little secret tell, is that this was the next page for here. They couldn't All see right. that. <laughs> oh, they couldn't see the pin. Nope, nope, now they can. Yeah. There we go. Here it is. So that was my little tell that this is my next page. All right. Oh, sorry, because the thing was still up there. Yep. Sorry. Hey, Michael, okay. shout out to you uh, all the way up in Ojai, <laughs> who is uh, our uh, basically our producer at this point. He manages all of the extras on our stream now. He does. And thank you, Michael. All right. Throw the panel back up and make sure I got this right one. <laughs> okay. All right. So we've got the, so page number two, what is that right? Page number two is the horse. Page three is the cat. And then page four was the moon. So there we go. Okay, so that's what I needed to make sure I got those. The other thing is to look for the center one. Obviously, this one, we could put it in totally different order and it would be fine. This one, we're going to get it in basically the right order. And then we're going to sort of center that. So I have a little thread hanging out here. And then we're going to pin it. So what I have found is with the batting, it is so thick here because you've got three layers of batting and six layers of cuddle. It is a lot. And so it really kind of wants to struggle through this. So the flannel is a little bit easier. At this point, if you're going to do it with the batting underneath, just make sure that you sort of take your time. What I did the first time, and it worked pretty well, was I basted these two pages together, and then I stuck it onto the book. And that, was, that helped to not fight all of those pages at one time. We're going to fight all of the pages at one time. We're just going to line these, these guys up so that the blues are basically matching. And I'm going to pin it on either side because I do not want to have to move any of these pins as I'm going. I want to get it in place and have it stay there. So because I'm using the clover pins, we've talked about it before and I will reiterate that the ones that are in the box, which you have from last week, I think, the ones in the box are stronger. Okay, so this is a white one that's in the box. And let me show you, compared to this is their like um, medium weight one. Okay, so it bends a little bit here. These don't bend. Okay, so these are really good for using in something like this where I really need it to kind of stab through and back up. It's not gonna bend my pin at all. 
Did you put crinkle in all of the pages? I did. What? Yes, yes, on one side of all of the pages. One side of all the pages. Got so it. when you come over here, it's every other. So this one crinkles. This one doesn't. This one crinkles. This one doesn't. This one crinkles. This one doesn't. Got it. Okay. Because like I said, I'm not a crinkle lover, so I don't really want all of that crinkle in there. <laughs> I think having the contrast back and forth is is nice, yeah. right? My kids are probably like, "Yeah, mom, I remember." put all of the noisy toys away like sorry you mean like the drum it. set yeah <laughs> <Actually>. <laughs> okay so now we're going to go ahead and stitch this down so you can stitch it in a few different ways you can zigzag it down you can straight stitch it down whatever you want to do we're just going to straight stitch it all the way down we're going to try to get that little hump jumper again Okay, so I didn't show you the package because I just ripped it out so fast to, to use it. So, sorry, it has a price label look, still on it. Look, I paid $5 tag. for it. Um, I got this over at Pasadena Sew and Back. Can you tell I like quilt shops? <laughs> I bought this here, I bought the there. Um, so anyway, this is what this is. It's a Dritz project, a product, and uh, it is made for doing the thick seams on jeans. Is why they call it a genema jig, But it actually works for thick seams everywhere apparently on cuddle too, which is awesome. So what I want to do is get this as flat as possible underneath here. You can see a little bit of a line in the fabric. I don't know if you guys can see oh, that yeah. white line just a little bit. And that is actually just weirdly part of the fabric. So if you follow that, you can do your center seam. Look at that, I got the little Gina Magic back there. Okay, so now we're gonna give this a try. Okay, I'm trying to figure out where to put my arms. <laughs> you put your arms where okay. you gotta put your arms. I so, will move the camera. Okay, so I'm going to up this on my first round. So I'm actually at a 4.5 stitch length, which is big, and I totally get that. But I'm gonna try to go across once and then come back is what I'm gonna do. All right, so I'm gonna secure my stitch, just do a little lock stitch. Okay, and I've got the Gina Majig back here. Look at how nicely that worked. Okay, and I'm just going to take this nice and slow, and I'm kind of pushing it as it comes through because it's very thick. And I'm just going to take my time because it's got a lot of layers here. Now I'm going to kind of grab, do that thing where I grab the front and the back and help it make its way through. Just kind of guide it so I can hopefully get it in a somewhat straight line. I'm going to reassure myself that no child is really going to care. Right? Okay. I'm going to pick this up. Turn it all the way around. It's funny because my foot doesn't want to stay up because it's so thick. Put that back there again. Okay, and now I'm just gonna stitch right back over what I stitched before, okay? So this is just gonna secure it just a little bit better. Come on, little guy. There we go. Better to do two passes with a bigger stitch than one pass with smaller stitches? Yes, because um, they trying to shove it through on a small stitch is really hard. And we would, I would suggest that you do, would do it with two rows of stitches anyway, just because this is going to be the stress point for it. You know I mean, this is Got where it. the kids are going to tug it and hold it and pull it. Tug of war, even. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we want to give it some, some stability. All right. I know uh, Gail, when she did the original one, she... Oops. Gail is actually on, by the oh, way. Oh, if she Gail. is. Hi, Gail. Uh, she did hers like in a little box. I'll show you the sample that I did when I tried to do a little box. It didn't work very well. So I feel like the box would probably do better. I have a better, I have better luck trying to go over the same line twice. Okay. So that's how it looks on the back, which is totally fine. Got it. All right. And there's our inside, and then it just grabs all of these pages and suddenly we have a little book okay That's so come cute. around front and i will show you a few different samples so because like i said i've made it a few times 
So this is the version with batting. Let's see if I can get these to lay together so you can see sort of the thickness of them. Okay, so this is the one with the flannel and this is the one with the batting. Okay, so you can see how much thinner this one is. So if you have a machine that um, doesn't love sewing thick fabrics, I would definitely do a flannel one. It's just, it's just thinner. You can see that, right? Mm -hmm. How much thinner it is. Okay, so that makes a big difference is the flannel in there. Okay, this one, like I said, is batting. I tried to stitch this on the same line twice and I couldn't even, no, got a little. I'm not gonna zoom Oops. in on that. Sometimes that happens. Uh, so this is the this is the one that I made on my featherweight, I think. Yeah, uh, and this one has the batting in it. So this is the old version, not the old version. This is the other version. This is the one we did first. This is with the cute little uh, owls and bunnies. <coughs> Excuse me, raccoons. Oh no. <coughs> Oh no. Do I need to get a, a glass moment. of water? We might have a moment. <coughs> Do you have one? There we go. Okay, sorry guys. And by water, I mean iced tea. True. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. This is the one. Oh no, I'm going to have to take another drink. This one is also done with. This one was with cotton inside. Okay. I'm taking a drink. Hold on. <laughs> Check this out. Look at this instead. Okay. Sorry. I was. Trying to see if there was a quick way for me to mute your mic. And there's... <coughs> nope, you just get to hear me. I have a little tickle in my throat. So this is this one is done with cotton. Or, um, yeah, just cotton. Like quilting cotton inside. Which is even flatter. So the reason I want to do something inside of it is because it gives it stability. It just makes it a little bit easier to sew. But this is super cute. This one is really flat and has only the outside. Oh, no. This was the one that I put like one inch. Oh, you just right in the edge. It's just the tiniest little crinkle. Nice. This is what it has three inches. Okay. So there is a big difference. That's right. This is like teeny tiny little crinkle. So this is probably more along my speed. Got it. <laughs> this is a teeny tiny. This is the bigger. So these are the two variations of the soft book that we have with critter count and the on the farm and both of them are available in kits that do the blanket as well as the book okay so i think that is it whoo that was a fun little project that's pretty good right very nice now i have two yay um super easy and super cute the other thing that you could do is you could totally embellish these so if you wanted to you could do some quilting on it you could add some cute little like i was thinking like there's a little um the horse would be fun to add some like actual hair with, you know, pearl cotton or some thin yarn or um, maybe even some faux fur. I don't know. But it'd be kind of fun to do. And you could actually do some little quilting to make things puff up and all of that stuff, too. But it is super easy to do the panel. You can buy the panel just as itself. Like I said, I think it's technically like a one yard cut or you can get it at the kit. And that will include the blanket, which is the so simple blanket is what you make with that. And we actually do have a video for that available too. So if you get the kit, make sure that you look for the video for the so simple blanket and you can watch the video for this. All right. Okay. All right. Before we announce the winner, we have a little something to share with you. We have, uh, as a company and particularly our videographer, um, have been working on a not, not me, not Hawk, <laughs> like a real videographer. <laughs> I'm the cameraman, <laughs> different. <Yeah. laughs> a videographer that we have, um, his name is Jeremy, and he's been working on a film, and we have some fabric that coordinates with it. And so we wanted to show you the little trailer for it, and then I'll tell you a little more about the uh, the fabric and how you can get a hold of it after that. So Michael, you want to run the little video? All right, let me get a picture of you here. Do I have to? Come on, it'll just take a second. <laughs> Besides, I like the version they painted this year. What's that?
Hey, Alana. We're back. Okay. I should have brought my popcorn for that. Um, so that was the that's the little trailer for the movie that is coming out. The movie will be available. It coordinates with fabric. We are going to be doing a sew together Tuesday using that fabric later down the road. Very excited about it. That fabric is shipping to stores now, and then the film will be available June 1st, so just about a month from now. And uh, you'll get more information about that. But if you buy the fabric at a store, they should give you a little postcard that'll give you the um, like kind of a link to be able to go watch the movie. So we're really excited about being able to kind of partner the two together. And if you noticed the, in the film, there's all sorts of sort of cameos from our different fabrics, which is kind of fun for me to like look through and like, oh, I like that, oh, I know that fabric. Like, it was kind of fun. So anyway, we're really excited about this. It's gonna be a really fun promotion. Like I said, we're gonna use the fabric for an upcoming Sew Together Tuesday. So anyway, keep your eyes out for it and keep your eye out for the fabric. So today's winner, we're very excited is, Inda, is that how you pronounce it? Inda D. So congratulations. Please send us your shipping address, your phone number, and all of that good stuff within 48 hours, and we will send you a cuddle kit. So you'll be able to make your own cuddle blanket, um, unless you want the panel, and then let me know, and I'll send you the panel instead, okay? So either way, um, we'll send you some fabric, and you can make some stuff. It's always great. Uh, so if you have not subscribed, make sure that you do that in YouTube. It'll let you know when we are actually going to go live, which we do every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific. So make sure that you are putting that on your calendar and join us every week. We'll be back next week with some special projects that are especially tailored toward moms. So we'll be doing a few different ones. So we have two days actually next week. We're doing two different projects, one on each day. And uh, if you are part of our I Love Cuddle group, you will see events on there for to announce what we're making next week. If you are not part of our I Love Cuddle group, then you should definitely be there. And you can find us on Facebook. It's just I Love Cuddle Fabric. We have um, a lot of people on there now who all love Cuddle Fabric and who love sewing with it. So it's really, it's a great supportive group. And I encourage you to join us there. We'll be back next week. Like I said, a special Mother's Day project's coming up. I'm really excited about it. And until then, happy sewing. <laughs>